Michael still has a tendency sometimes to probably speak before he, before he thinks. He, he probably should not have said that because obviously it conjures up some negative um, uh, connotations about the civil rights movement. But his point is, is that the American people are driving this agenda. And what they're saying is they don't want specifically what the Obama administration is specifically pushing. At least that's what he's trying to say. So I understand what he's trying to say. He probably should have said it. You think it wasn't scripted? Well, clearly it wasn't scripted. <laughs> oh, really? it was not scripted. Okay, okay, fine. So, so he makes the comment, uh, but, but the reality is when you talk about, uh, he's saying we want to drive the bus in terms of this economy and lead it. Okay, so you can get all wrapped up in, well, he made this, this particular comment. The overarching point is that you, you see him coming out swinging, recognizing that he has to raise money. He has to regain the confidence of the folks on the ground when you have party fundraisers trying to do their own thing with other different 527s. And so that's what it boils down to. This little bus comment, it blows over, it can conjure up anything. Right. At the end of the day, what it's speaking to is, he's saying, this is the Republican focus for the midterms, and we're going to contrast the Democrats. That's what it boils down to. Eric, is you know, this a winning I, I, message I, for you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I've just got to say, I, I, I want to see the original. I'm not convinced that this footage hasn't been doctored because I didn't see his foot in his mouth. And, <laughs> I mean, that, that seems to be how we see Michael Steele these days more than anything, that he was actually making complete sentences is refreshing for me as a Republican. Well, well, well he actually I, makes you know. complete sentences a lot, so, I mean, it does happen. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I, I agree that, that w whether he's talking about being on the back of the bus or I think a few weeks ago he used a broomstick analogy, uh, you know, it's politics. We'll get past that one. Uh, I do think, though, that the message that he's delivering out there resonates with the base now. And it's really getting to be all about the base on both sides. We're hearing Obama and the Democrats talking about returning to George Bush. We're hearing the Republicans bash Obama. We're, we're kind of at that point in the campaign season where it's about driving up the base momentum. Well, let me ask you, Congresswoman, Pelosi, um, Pelosi's aides uh, were asked about the attacks on her and whether they uh, will work. And uh, one of them said to me uh, that the, uh, do we have the, uh, do we have that sound, uh, that pilot? Uh, one of the Pelosi aides, I'll put it up, one of the Pelosi aides said to me that uh, you should ask Michael Steele if the hat was made in China. This shows how desperate they are. It didn't work in 2006, 2008, and it won't work in 2010. Our candidates are focused on job creation. They have no new ideas. Congresswoman Sanchez, this is the message a lot of Democrats are trying out on the campaign trail, that it's all about, they're about the future, the other guys are about the past, but it doesn't seem to be connecting. Oh, well, I've been out here now in my district. It's so great to be home in California. And as I talk to people about what's going to happen with health care, what it's really about, how there are no death panels to it, how it's not coming out of their pockets, how we're going to bring down the costs and why that is going to happen. You know what? We're connecting out here. And as I spoke and have been speaking to my colleagues around the nation about what's working and what they're talking about, you know what? People are really getting energy about what we've been able to do. We put a stimulus package that now a majority of economists have said if we hadn't it would have been the second Great Depression in our nation. So we're beginning to see that. We're beginning to see the future agenda of America, the one that talks and works on and researches new technologies, new cures well, for diseases. I, Everything I, that was in that I've stimulus package that is coming to fruition. Go so ahead, Eric. I'm pretty excited yeah, I, about I've, it. I've got a question on that one. The, the National Republic Republican Congressional Committee put out a website yesterday with the 76 or 75 most endangered Democrats in the House and only six of them are advertising town halls for the recess so far and if it's so great why aren't these 70 members of Congress there are only five of the most endangered who are why are the other 70 having town halls to talk about this are Democrats scared Look, of town, town halls, halls are no, of course not. I've had several. And, you know, uh, when a person stands up who doesn't want to listen to the facts, you know, Bill Clinton used to say something. It was very clear to me, and I've always believed this. We don't have to say bad things about the Republicans. I mean, they say bad things about us all the time, but we don't have to make up things. We don't have to say bad things. All we have to do is talk about the facts. We lay out Let the me, facts and people see that what we've been they working on the works for them. Go ahead, here's, Roland. Here's the problem with that, though. The Democrats' messaging has been all over the place. The Democrats also have a problem in that you have the House. They pass any number of bills, some 350, 400 bills, that have been stalled in the United States Senate, where you have 59 Democrats. 
So it's a little hard to say we've done all of these things when so many of these initiatives have not been signed into law well, by the, the truth president. Is, in Pelosi's defense, she's the one who's passed a law. No, 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 my people care about what I've been doing. Our constituents, the people who live here, they care about what's been happening to them. We don't have Robert, to have a national message. We don't sit in rooms talking with each other saying, oh, let's say this about Pelosi today. That's not a necessity. If you don't Every have a national individual message, you're going to have a problem in November. Up for here's the election. Issue. <laughs> yeah. Jessica, here's the issue. The Republicans are trying to nationalize this election about all about Obama all about Pelosi, right. and obviously the Democrats are trying to say, well, wait a minute here, we don't want to go back to the failed policies of the Bush past. But here's the issue. The American people are smart enough to realize that the Democrats have been in control of Roland's point now almost 20 months. They have to own this economy. They have to own the issues that, in fact, the American people are concerned about. And the fact of the matter is, is that the American people are not satisfied. Let me ask you, the Republicans have tried to nationalize an election before with Nancy Pelosi. We have an ad the last time they tried this, if we could roll that. Now, gorged on our taxpayer dollars, Pelosi has grown into a power-hungry Goliath, defying the will of the American people. Who has the power to stop her? All right, that ad did not work. What year, what year was that ad? That ad was the Pennsylvania 12, the special election, and a Democrat won. It was for Murthy's right. district this year. Right, because again, though, but, but when you look at, first of all, what was the timing of that election? Also, it was an election being held by a, by a Democrat. Democrats were expected to lead that actual race. What you're facing, though, in terms of this midterm... But the point is, the ad did not work. Right, 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 right. right, right. Yeah. That particular ad didn't yeah. work. But what you have now is, the Democrats can talk about the health care issue, but the driving debate will deal with the economy. And what they have to confront, well, you know, whether they want to own it or not, is 9.5% unemployment. That is the perfect... Yeah.